It is very important to understand uh, various types of microscope. So in this episode, I will be talking of various types of scanning electron microscope. One of them is called environmental scanning electron microscope or sometimes it's called variable pressure scanning electron microscope. In this microscope, as the name suggests, the environment will keep on changing. In this in changing of environment, we mean that the surround around the sample, the samples, the atmosphere will change. What does it mean? Basically, you may be knowing that all these microscopes work under high vacuum, that is 10 to the power minus 5 tor. And many a times, we cannot put samples which you can put it under vacuum. They will start degassing. Some of the materials will start uh, ev giving evaporation, and some of the materials which has got oil, oily substance, they will keep on uh, ev evaporating. So you cannot observe them properly. So it is very important that we change the atmosphere. That means, in general, scanning electron microscope requires very high vacuum. I am going to discuss something today where you don't require a very high vacuum and the atmosphere can be changed. It is a very new technology, last 30 years back it is invented. What it, what we keep on doing for non-conducting and for non-evaporating like other samples which are not purely vacuum oriented, a gas inside the chamber in the lower part of the microscope that is near the sample area. In, in that sample area, if we introduce the argon gas or a water, water molecule gas, which are actually neutral in the beginning, but which are get bombarded by the incoming electron, they get dissociated into positive ions. And these positive ions, they come near the sample and the samples, you know, on the sample surface which are non-conducting, there is already a charge accumulated. So electrons cannot pass through the sample. You can also do different types of analysis in the scanning electron microscope because the X-rays generated along with the sample X-rays, this can be analyzed using a different detectors. This is called EDS or a WDS. There are two types of equipment. If it is electron dispersal spectrometry, basically the electrons get, uh, get interacted with the sample and what is X-rays coming out, if you find out the energy of that, using a detector which is very cheap detector then we can find out what is the energy value and what is the element. Another part is an in situ microscopy where it is very important to understand what is happening in the samples inside the machine. This is a new concept for last 15 years back people try to understand that how how to understand what is happening in the sample inside the microscope. It is called in situ electron microscope. So inside the SEM, we can put a heating chamber and a cooling chamber and you can start heating the sample up to 1000 degrees centigrade. We can cool the sample up to 170 degrees centigrade, up to minus 170 degrees centigrade. So the technology, there is a tremendous contribution in the technological development. So the whole industry trying to use now that very fast heating and you can cool them in a subsequent way. In this way, you can change the structure, understand the structure. Like I will give you, I will give you one more life example. Many of us do actually small level soldering in your electronic circuit. Right in the school days, we used to make small projects. What happens when you heat the soldering material and then you release it? It joins the two two wires very concisely and forever. Try to understand the phase changes, the structure changes that we are able to observe today in the inside the microscope. That is observed here in this particular video. Apart from that, we can also do other type of in-situ in in properties like we can do mechanical property inside the machine. There you can make small spinny samples and we can make them the test, the mechanical property, the strength value, the property value, compression value. All this thing you can probably can find out from the material inside the microscope. It is called in situ electron microscope. One of the important discovery in last 15 years back was called electron dust scatter diffraction. When I was in Germany working, and at that time it was developing, so I worked on a, on, a, on a problem which is given by Siemens, which is one of the company who has taken up microscope in the beginning of in 1860s. 
This electron, electron backscatter diffraction can give you orientations of your sample. What happens? How do you do? We take our samples, we tilt the sample up to 70 degree. So once you tilt the sample 70 degree, a certain new set of information comes out from the material. It is called Kikuchi pattern. A band of information keeps on coming out from that angle. If you go from 45 to 70, if you go in that range, the start of Kikuchi cones comes out. Those Kikuchi cones are like fingerprint of an each individual, the same as fingerprint for the material. This material are having which orientations? As you know, all crystal structures, like you know in the school days, a, a, a cubic structure, a body centered cubic structure, an hexagonal cubic structure, BCC, FCC, HCP, those structures, how they arrange in a material is very, very important. Because if you know how they arrange, and how it is to be arranged, then you know how it is applicable. Like I will give you an example, the railway line, they have to be oriented, perfectly oriented, otherwise after 5, 10 or 5 to 10 train passes, if the orientations are not proper, the train, the train line will get deformed. So orientations in the material is very important, which you can find out from this electron backscatter diffraction is called EBSD machine, which is fitted in a scanning electron microscope. In this, we can find out how the grains are oriented and this grain orientation are given an international standard. So it's online each time a electron beam falls on a, on a sample, on a crystal, what is the orientation it finds out? It matches with the database and gives us a color. So we get a colored image of how the all grains are oriented. If they're all oriented, we get completely one color as seen in the picture. If they're randomly oriented, you can see how nice, beautiful structure you can see. Not only that, it can give you the phases present, it can give you the orientations, it can give you the misorientations, it can also find out the uh, gain morphology. All these details can be found out for all materials now using electron backscatter diffraction technique. One of the important discovery was focused and beam in the scanning electron microscope mode. This discovery has made us many, many things change in the electronic industry especially. It is called focused ion beam or three-dimensional uh, focused ion beam in SEM mode. What it takes care of, as the name suggests, there are three-dimensional variations we can do in the machine. There are two beams, it's called 2L beam equipment. So there are two beams in the machine. One is ion beam, which is a gallium ion beam, and there is an electron beam. These two beams can be used whenever required for different different purposes. The gallium ion beam is used to remove material, to cut material, to deposit materials in a different particular area and that beam we switch it off and use electron beam to magnify and see things what happens. This is especially important and very important it is exactly like working in your kitchen. You take a knife and any material you take you can cut open it, you can remove it and you can, you can remove the portion and then start observing with your eyes same thing what we do exactly in the inside the machine. In this we use iron beam to cut material and remove it. They start electron beam to start observing them. This is very very important for any electronic component, for any applications we use like for spacecraft or for aerospace, engine, ICs, anything. They are all fabricated using automated machine called MOCBD, this molecular beam epitaxial methods. This were not been seen by human eyes, how they are getting deposited. Many times it failed and the aircraft failed or the missions failed or the space the spacecraft has a problem. So this is very important to observe the processes, how they are processed by machine. So these chips are taken, each individual chips are taken and put inside the machine. You can cut open a small region and start seeing what how it is deposited inside. So this is called focused ion beam and then Using that also we can take small materials cut out and use as use it as a sample for investigating in TEM. Many of the samples which are brittle, we cannot take, make samples for the transmission electron microscope, which I will be discussing in the next episode. It is very difficult to make samples, but using the focused ion beam, we can very conventionally, very easily we can make the samples which you can readily put inside the machine. With this, and with this understanding, with these examples, I just want to conclude that this is a part of scanning electron microscope and its accessories and its various various versions. In the next episode, I will be talking of 
ट्रांसमिशन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप